If you're not familiar, Cypress is a really wonderful end-to-end -end test runner, and you can see an example of it here. Now, about a year ago, to make it seamless to use with Laravel, I created a package that adds support for most of the tasks that you would probably want. Uh, things like working with eloquent model factories, or triggering an artisan command, or seeding your database, or migrating, or dealing with environment files, or named routes, or any of those things. So I've been doing a little bit of work on it in the last couple of weeks, and I thought I'd give you a quick tour to show how easy it is to use. Now to demonstrate this, we'll use the demo application from a related Inertia series. And this should be fine. We have basic support for authentication. We have a demo landing page, maybe a CMS to browse your users. And of course, we can log out. All right, so that should be fine to demonstrate this. OK, let's get going. The first step, of course, is to install Cypress. And we can do that through NPM. Now you'll see I'm running two commands there install Cypress, and then we call npx Cypress open. This is the command that triggers the Cypress test suite, like you see here. And notice, because it's the first time we're running it, it gives you some example specs that you can have a look at. But let's delete them. I don't care about that. OK, the next step is to install the Laravel integration. And we can install that through Composer. All right, you can see I'm grabbing, it looks like 2.2.1. Now, as part of that, it'll make available a Cypress boilerplate command. And this will basically set up your directory structure. It will copy over some, some file stubs. It'll set up your Cypress configuration, a bunch of things. OK, where do we want to put our Cypress tests? Well, probably in the test directory. And here's all the files it updated. OK, so I will let you take a look at most of that. But real quick, notice your Cypress configuration you'll want to make sure that the base URL is correct. So by default, we read your environment file for app URL, and we assume that's what you want. But yeah, if that's not quite right, make sure you fix it. And then next, we have some sensible defaults that you'd probably want. OK, next, we set up a .env.cypress configuration file. This is useful because when you run your acceptance tests, your Cypress tests, you probably don't want it to use the exact same environment as your local environment. Maybe you want a different database. Maybe for local, you're going to use an array driver for, for one of Laravel's components. But for your acceptance testing, maybe you want the file driver, or you're going to use memcached or, or Redis. Uh, you can set all of that here. So for example, maybe uh, for our tests, we're going to use MySQL. And then I'm going to use a custom database here. Like um, I think I have one called demo acceptance. Yeah, anyways, you can use custom environment settings here. And then basically what happens is when you run your test suite, we do a very basic copy and paste. We take your local environment and we back that up. And then we take this environment file and we promote it by renaming the file, literally, to .env. And you can actually see this. If I go into your tests, notice we have a new Cypress directory, support. And yeah, right here, this is your main support file. Here we have hooks for before and after the Cypress test suite runs. And yeah, one of the tasks we execute is we activate the Cypress environment file. And then when the test suite is done, we revert it back. But actually on this note, one really useful thing is when you're running your acceptance tests, if it fails for whatever reason, it would be useful if we could then interact with the application in that exact state that the test failed. The problem is, if you immediately revert it back to your local environment when the test suite is done, you can't do that, of course. So what you might want to do temporarily is comment this out. And then, yeah, uh, if, if your Cypress tests fail for whatever reason, you can instantly begin browsing the application to figure out what was going on at that point of failure. Anyways, that's just something to think about. So now all of your tests will go into this integration directory. So for example, if you want to play around with authentication, we could say auth spec, and we're going to describe authentication and how that might work. And it's really simple. And then we could say something like um, it signs a user in. And what would we need to do there? Well, we need to make sure our database is in the right state. So we could run refresh database. And this is effectively like running migrate fresh. Then I could say visit the login page. And you know what? Why don't we just stop right there and see what happens when we run this? So I will say npx Cypress open. 
and let's run our new auth spec. And here we go. So we run our migrations and then we visit the login page. Let's keep going. What would we need to do next? Well, maybe fill out the email field. And if I select this, we can see it looks like it has an ID of email. Now later you can learn how to use things like page objects or even data attributes. But for now, accessing it by ID is fine. So let's say, Sai, get the element with an ID of email. And let's type foo at example.com. Now in my Cypress configuration, I have watch for changes set. So for example, if I save this, you'll see it instantly reruns and it fills out that input. And yeah, you can turn that on and off right here. And actually I find myself toggling that all the time. Okay, what next? We want to fill out the password and that has an idea password. Now keep in mind, I don't have a user here. So we know this is going to fail. All right, and then finally, I wanna press the button that says login. And then let's see, let's find the button that says login and I will press it. All right, let's run it. Aha, and of course it fails because we don't have a user. So maybe we can make our test assert that if you try to sign in with invalid credentials, we should provide some feedback. All right, it provides feedback for invalid login credentials. And then I could say, after I click on it, I expect to see that message there. All right, we try again and it works. And notice while we're here, we have full time traveling. So I could go back to right when we visited the page and right when we typed in foo. And notice we have before and after I type it, we can see that populate. Really cool, isn't it? Okay, so now let's do the happy path. In this case, I probably wanna say, well, given I already have a user, how would we do that? Well, if you were writing a server-side test with Laravel, you would use something like model factories. And we can use the cypress.create method to, to simulate that. So I could say, create a user, and let's give them an email of joe at example.com. And yeah, this would effectively translate to something like in your Laravel, user factory create email is joe at example.com. Same thing, we're just accessing it through uh, HTTP. Okay, so let's update this. We'll sign in Joe. The default password for a user factory is always the string password, so that should be fine. And when we finish the sign in, and if that worked, I will assert that I'm redirected, and I think it just takes us to the home page for this demo. All right, so now it runs both of them. And success, it works. And now here's the cool thing. Because we're not immediately reverting the environment file back to the local environment, if I want, I can now interact with this application in the exact state of the most recent test. Or I can even review the database structure. So if I go to table plus, I can see, yep, we created a user with that email address. And yeah, that ends up being incredibly useful. And yeah, you get the idea. So think about it. We now have the ability to refresh our database. We can work with model factories. Uh, why don't we play around with logging in an existing user? How about um, it visits the dashboard or something like that? So for example, right now, if I visit the home page, which is basically the dashboard here, I think it should redirect us to the login page. So sometimes you're writing a test and you don't care about all the other ones here. You just wanna focus on the current test. For that, add the dot only flag. And now when you run it, you'll see it only triggers that single test. And sure enough, we can see when we visit the home page, it redirects us to login. Okay, why don't we say, well, what if I already am logged in? I can say login like so. And now if I switch back, Notice the test is going to fail because at this point, I'm already signed in, as you see here. So it did not redirect us to the login page. Okay, but notice the tests are still running. And just as an aside, that's a feature of Cypress. You can tell it how many times to rerun your tests just in case you got a, a false uh, failure. So again, that is set in your cypress.json file. And you'll see if it fails, it will retry it two times. And of course you can, you can tweak that however you want, but two can sometimes be useful. Uh, and again, if you're working with certain third-party APIs that might be slow to respond, yeah, you could end up in a situation where the test might fail, even though 
you haven't done anything wrong. You just had a delayed response. So it will rerun the test suite uh, or the current test two times before giving up and moving on. But yeah, if we come back, I could say now, because I'm logged in, uh, I expect to see something like welcome back and maybe their name is John Doe. All right, maybe we're following TDD here. So we give it a shot, but it doesn't say welcome back John Doe. It says welcome back Dr. Janelle. Okay, well, why don't we say I want to log in the user with the name of John Doe. Now we give it a run and it works. Okay, so cypress.login is pretty cool. If you call it just as a method, it will create a user using fake data, then persist it to the database, and then it will set that new user as the authenticated user for the request. If you provide any attributes here, like we had earlier, it will first check to see, well, are you trying to log in somebody who already exists in the database? If so, let's find that user and set them as the authenticated user. And if it couldn't find any user matching those attributes, it again creates the user and then sets them as the authenticated person. So this ends up being shorthand for something like uh, cypress.create. And I could say app models user where the name is John Doe. Yeah, I could manually create a user and then I could manually try to log in the user with the name of John Doe. And I think that would probably work. And yeah, it does work, but it's easier to simply merge it. But actually on that note, I'll show you one cool thing you can do is instead pass an object to cypress.create or cypress.login. So I could say, I do want to create a uh, user and maybe the attributes, once again, our name, I'll do myself in this case, Jeffrey Way, and I can even set up uh, specific states or relationships. So I could say, give me the user with the state, and I don't know, let's go to our user factory uh, to set up a database state. Ah, here's one, unverified. So normally when you create a user, email verified at is set to now, but you could call an optional state that will set it to null. So if I want to trigger that model state, I could say state and then provide however many states we need. We'll do unverified. Okay, so right now if we give it a run, we're not doing anything here, but I did create a user in the database. So if I come back and give this a refresh, yeah, here is our new user and notice email verified at has been set to null. But also notice we had these extra users. So this is where resetting your database is really important. And generally, you'll want to do it before every single test. So once again, I could do something like this. And now uh, it reruns. So if I come back to table plus, it should clear that out. And it does. But yeah, generally, what you'll probably do is set up a before each. So you'll do something like this. Before every test here, I want to call cypress.refresh database. And basically, the way it works with Cypress is these commands are run serially which means you don't have to run a bunch of then calls to wait for the asynchronous request to complete before operating on that. Uh, the way Cypress is built, you don't really need to worry about that at all. So with that in mind, this test will not run until we have refreshed our database, like so. And I can get rid of all of that. And that would be a good way to go. And yeah, just one more thing, you could also uh, load specific uh, relationships. So maybe if a user had a profile, I don't have one here, but if on your user model, you had a profile here and maybe a user has one uh, profile or something like that. Yeah, you could, you could specify that when you create this record, you also want to eager load the profile relationship and then return that as part of the request. You could do that as well. Now, actually on that note, if we come back and give this a run, I can click on the create method here and notice it prints the output to the console. So I can see right here, this is what was returned from the database. And if you ever wanna operate on that, I could say cypress.create and then let's grab its uh, name should equal myself. So if I come back, that runs really quickly, but sure enough, we can see that, yep, it worked. Or what you can do is say, create the model, and then if you need to do something with that, um, maybe some kind of expectation, I could say expect user.name to equal exact same thing as we had before. Uh, this would be another way that we could write that. Come back and it still works.
And it's kind of cool when you think about it. We're writing this all in JavaScript. And basically what's happening behind the scenes is we're making API requests to the server. So when I say cypress.create, we're sending a message to the server that, hey, we want to create a model of user with these attributes, with this state. And it will then run that user factory in this case and then return the result as JSON. And that same flow is going to be true for everything. So when I call cypress.login, it's going to do the exact same thing. So you can have a look at everything we provide here because you are in control of these commands uh, just in case you need to tweak things. And it looks a little complicated, but it's really not. So for example, right here, let's have a look at current user. Here's one you can use. When you call cypress.currentuser, it's going to return to you the currently authenticated user. So we do that by fetching a CSRF token, and then we make a request to an endpoint. We pass through our token, and then when we have a response, which if we have an authenticated user, will be that user object, and then we return it to you. Okay, let's play around with that, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, right here, I could say, get rid of this. Log in a user with the name of John Doe, and then anywhere, if I need to grab my current user, I could say cypress.currentuser. And then once again, I could say, uh, give me the name property should, we'll do the exact same thing as before. Come back, run it, and it works. And I think you'll find this can often be useful when maybe you do need to peek into the database. Sometimes that goes against the spirit of acceptance testing, where if you want to assert that the user is signed in or is paying, then you'll go through the UI. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it can still be useful to, to peek into the database, to look in the user and say, okay, after they sign up for a subscription, if I grab that user from the database, I should be able to check you know, their, their plan name and it should be equal to the monthly plan. You know, that can still be useful in certain situations. The final thing I'll show you is you can even do arbitrary PHP, which admittedly I don't reach for very much, but yeah, if you ever need to execute some kind of uh, PHP, whether it's a query or updating a configuration or something weird like that, uh, you could technically do it in your Cypress tests using this command. So notice if I run this, all right, let's have a look at what was returned. And of course, it's four. So yeah, I could even say something like um, app models user, how many users are in the database? Well, if we refresh the database before the test runs, it'll probably say zero, right? But of course, it is performing that query, which is the thing we're actually checking for. And if we want to see that, maybe before we run this, let's use the object syntax here. Create me a user. Why don't we create, how about 20 of them? If we run it again, I bet we'll get 20 when we fetch the count, and we do. We have 20 users in our database, and we can view them here. All right, and that's been a crash course in using Cypress with the Laracast slash Cypress integration package that you can pull in through Composer. I hope it's useful.